All right there, everyone. National Economic Council Director Larry Kudlow has confirmed that the Trump administration is considering the regulation of Google. That's what we'll be talking about on today's video. If this is your first time here, welcome to my channel. I post twice a day analyzing current events in light of conservative trends, and you can help support that in three ways. First, by clicking on the link below and becoming a monthly Patreon supporter. Secondly, by taking advantage of our current book deal where you can get my book, Classical versus Modern Education, for only 99 cents at the link below. And of course, by hitting that bell and subscribe button, it'll be privileged to have you as part of this channel. All right. So I'm sure you're all uh, very familiar now with the epidemic of internet censorship towards uh, conservatives by the Google company, as well as by uh, other tech giants such as Twitter and Facebook, and unfortunately, by extension of its relation to Google, uh, by YouTube. Uh, it is becoming increasingly acceptable among the Silicon Valley elite to begin silencing conservative nationalists and populist voices such as Alex Jones, the most prominent of them. Uh, and others that offend their liberal left-wing globalist sensibilities uh, by purging them from their social media platforms. Well, now, the one, the only President Donald Trump has stood up and said, in effect, no more. President Trump has mentioned on a number of occasions in his speeches and on Twitter that the days of Google censoring him and his fellow nationalists and populists and conservatives are over and that he is getting involved. Now, up to this point, it's been primarily, you know, rhetorical, right? He's been firing up the crowds with his speeches and mentions of getting involved with uh, this purge. But now, Larry Kudlow, his National Economic Council director, has confirmed that the Trump administration is, in fact, looking into regulating Google and ensuring that the days of silencing conservative voices will come to an end. The beauty in all this, the ironic beauty, is of course that Larry Kudlow was up to just a few months ago a social media personality. He was a talk show host. So isn't it just sweetly ironic that Google can actually be brought down, as it were, by a fellow social media personality? And of course, Trump used social media brilliantly in the 2016 campaign, so he has no intention of seeing this platform taken away from him. Now, we of course predicted this. We predicted that all of this social media purging of nationalist populist voices was only going to fuel the worldwide populist revolt. It was only a matter of time before populist leaders such as Donald Trump got involved. And we are, of course, now seeing this prediction come to uh, fruition. And I have to say that in many ways, it's almost bizarre that Google and YouTube and Facebook and Twitter didn't see this. I mean, it's bizarre that they didn't see that silencing and singling out conservatives and right-wing personalities was going to get them disciplined by our current conservative and right-wing federal government, led by our conservative right-wing president, who not only uses social media on a regular basis himself, but has a director of his National Economic Council who was once a talk radio host. I mean, this is just, this is completely careless on the part of Google CEOs. Moreover, you could just use history as your guide. In many ways, what's going on here right now with what Trump is saying is nothing new. The first thing to recognize here is that the size of Google renders the company incredibly vulnerable to this kind of government scrutiny, right? Any possible notion that Google is somehow untouchable and a permanent fixture in the world today is utter bunk. It's utter silliness. People said the same things when it came to IBM in the 70s and 80s. They said the same thing about Microsoft. They said the same thing about Sony, right? The notion that a massive company, a massive multi-billion dollar corporation is a permanent fixture in the world of corporate enterprise is a fairy tale. It's a non-starter in terms of the way things work in dynamic economies. When all is said and done, Google has reached a size and magnitude that almost asks, it quite literally begs 
for government regulation and intervention. Again, very, very much comparable to what happened to IBM. IBM had 70% market share in computer technology in the 60s and 70s. It was absolutely colossal. And computer technology just seemed destined to always be associated with those three letters, IBM. Then came the antitrust lawsuit, I believe it was in the late 60s, 1969, when IBM was mired in a 13-year antitrust battle with the Justice Department, which cost the company an untold amount of money and investors and uncertainty that it just didn't recover from until the 1990s. Microsoft went through its own ordeal with the government in the 2000s, eventually having to pay a billion-dollar settlement. The point here is that now that Google has risen to this kind of prominence, now that Google owns 90% of the search engine market share, it's literally begging for antitrust investigations and lawsuits. It's begging for it, right or wrong, right? Which makes Google's blatantly liberal leftist ideology enforcement all the more difficult to understand. In other words, why on earth would they call attention to themselves in the midst of a nationalist populist White House administration that would be happy to trigger just such antitrust investi investigations. Why would they do that? Why would they quite literally say, hey, Mr. President, look over here. Look at how we're mistreating all of your supporters. Look at us. Isn't that great? I don't know. Maybe they really, they really believe they're unbeatable, right? Perhaps they've actually fallen victim of actually believing the press, as it were, the propaganda that they are permanently uh, without competition. Well, uh, you know, they actually believe, I think, uh, in many respects that they will uh, reach the stratosphere of information aggregation. That's their business model. Uh, if you're not familiar, Google actually is a number, right? It comes from the number Google, G-O-O-G-O-L, which is 10 to the 100th power the number 10 followed by 100 zeros. It's greater than the number of particles in the universe. It's an astronomical uh, number. And in many respects, I think it, it obviously captures the governing philosophy of the company Google as they aim to aggregate quite literally the sum total of all digital information in one place, storing it in their centralized computer system as, a, as a, with extraordinary megahertz uh, capability. Nevertheless, Google is a thoroughly left-wing company. The scholar George Gilders has uh, documented their philosophical commitment to uh, combating global warming. They're committed to uh, uh, fostering a uh, politically correct multiculturalism, uh, the, the globalism. They're a thoroughly left-wing, you know, Silicon Valley organization. Very Marxist in many respects. But behind this left-wing ideology is a very definite business model that's structured around what Gilders calls aggregate and advertise. Uh, in other words, the reason why Google gives everything away for free, you know, it's email, it's internet, searches, YouTube, entertainment, Google calendars, and the like. The reason why it gives everything away for free is twofold. First, so that it can, of course, amass quite literally a significant portion of the world's population as its users. But then secondly, it takes that information that it has on these users in terms of tracking how they use the internet, their demographic information, their interests, search history, and the like. It takes that profile detailed information, and then it turns around and it sells it to advertisers. That's, that's Google's business model. It's aggregate and advertise. And because the information they compile is so specific, they give it to advertisers that you would supposedly want to hear from. So if you're a fishing enthusiast, have you ever noticed that when you surf the web, the advertisements that you see often involve products specific to fishing, right? Or if you've recently searched, I don't know, uh, for say a humidifier, have you noticed that the ads that tend to pop up around you no matter where you go on the internet, or advertising humidifiers, right? That's because Google offers to advertisers the most complete search data on all their users. So what does this all mean? What it all means is that you and I, as users of Google services, you and I, 
We are not customers. We are products. We are the ones who are for sale. Our data, that is, our profiles. That's how Google operates in Facebook and Twitter. That's how they all operate from a business model perspective. That's why Google via YouTube can drop Alex Jones, drop him like a hat. Because both he and his million member audience are not customers. They're the product. They are what Google sells. And if Google doesn't want to sell you anymore, then they'll drop you like a hat. You're gone. No customer service, nothing. You're gone. Goodbye. They delete you. So Google is finding that it's making lots and lots of enemies right now who are increasingly willing to begin the process of pushing back on the rather callous aggregate and advertise model that's selectively censoring ideas and opinions that they're not interested in selling. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing a mass backlash against this. And who is now leading the charge against Google, leading the charge of that backlash? Of course, none other than our own President Donald Trump. And I can assure you, if Trump is at the helm, Google is in for one heck of a fight. Don't forget, don't forget to click on that link below and get your copy of my book, Classical vs. Modern Education, for only 99 cents for a limited time. And as always, please like, comment, and subscribe. Click on our Pinterest link below, become a monthly supporter of this channel, and help us to continue to analyze current events in light of these awesome conservative trends so that you can personally and professionally flourish. God bless.